Let us consider example two. Say we are interested in finding the currents through each resistor, as well as the value of R2, given the I3 is equal to two amps. Now, if we look at our circuit below, we have resistor, let's call it R1, which is equal to eight ohms with a voltage potential V1 across the device. We have a resistor, let's call this R3, that has a resistance of one ohm and a voltage potential across the element denoted as V3. Then we have resistor R2 with a voltage potential V2 across it. We have a 12 volt and a 10 volt source that are powering our circuit. To begin, we will construct a KCL equation at node A. For this relates all our currents within our circuit. At node A, we have I1 entering and I3 and I2 exiting such that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 or the sum of our currents in is equal to sum of our currents out. We'll substitute the value of 2 amps for I3. We shall call this equation 1. Now we still have to determine I1 and I2. <clears throat> First we'll start with I1 and to do such we will apply Ohm's law. Recall Ohm's law states that the voltage potential across a device is equal to current running through it times its resistance. Or we can express I1 as V1, our voltage potential across the resistor, per R1, the resistance of our resistor. We shall call this equation 2. R1 is given as 8 ohms, but we still need to determine V1. How would we do such? The method we just learned about, KVL, provides a relation for our voltage rises and drops around a loop, such that we can construct a loop, loop 1, around the bottom portion of our circuit. Thus we can sum our voltage rises and drops. Doing such, our KVL equation is as follows. Note we will put our voltage potentials across our resistors consistent with our passive sign convention. That is, if I1 is running through R1 as such, our voltage potential would be illustrated as follows, such that when we do our KVL loop, starting at the bottom left-hand corner and proceeding clockwise, we'd have plus V1, plus V3, minus 10 volts would be equal to zero, or we can say V1 plus V3 is equal to 10 volts. We shall call this equation three. Now, V3 can be solved for the fact that we know the resistance of R3, one ohm, as well as we are given the current I3 is equal to two amps. Such that using Ohm's law, V3 would be equal to I3 times R3, or two amps times one ohm, or V3 is equal to two volts. Now we can substitute this result back into equation three, such that V1 plus two volts would be equal to 10 volts, or V1 is equal to eight volts. Now that we know V1, we can substitute this back into expression for I1, where I1 is equal to V1 per R1, such that I1 is equal to eight volts per eight ohms or one amp. Last but not least, we can substitute this back into our initial equation, i.e. our KCL equation, such that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, which is equal to I2 plus two amps. For this to be satisfied, I2 has to be equal to minus one amp. Next, we can use Ohm's law to solve for R2. Note that I2 is running through R2. To solve for V2, all we have to do is apply KVL around our top loop. That is, we'd have minus V3 plus V2 plus 12 volts is equal to zero. Or we could say V2 is equal to V3 minus 12 volts. We know V3 to be equal to two volts. Thus, V2 is equal to the quantity two minus 12 volts, or V2 is equal to minus 10 volts. And our current running through is minus one amps. Thus, R2 is equal to 10 ohms.